Hello and welcome to a new episode in the life of Ambercross Junction Railway. With the winter months coming on and my age getting in the way, I decided I probably didn't want to be out in the garden in the winter months running my railway. Very often it was wet, it is wet and cold and really these old bones really don't like that. So I thought I'd clear a space in my workshop and build an indoor line, albeit a very small one, a small branch line, but nonetheless I will have an area where I can play trains and run slate trains basically. So I decided to build a model similar to Melon Clicky, my exhibition layout, which is now in the hands of a new owner, and still out there because I did happen to see it um, when was this at the Garden Railway Show at uh, Peterborough earlier this year which is nice to see it still in, in existence and working. So I thought I'd build one similar uh, indoors as a permanent layout and based on a set on Dunawick and the surrounding quarries. Uh, but as you can see here, this is particularly Dunawick with the Slater's very fine model of a slate wagon and a host wagon. This particular host wagon was built by my good friend Dave Mills of 16 Mills. He's up on Anglesey and I'm not anywhere near Anglesey. In fact, I'm a long, long way away um, on the Kent coast. But so I decided to build an indoor line based on Dunawick. <clears throat> and way back, uh, my good friend, my late good friend, Bob Alderman, asked, offered me a load of his 16 mil models, which he'd been building. And he was giving up on 16 mil and going back to his beloved 7 mil, which I came from into 16 mil. And I had been a bit of a slate quarry enthusiast. I said, oh, I sort of welcomed that with open arms. So I purchased all of his 16 mil stuff. And there was a lot of these wagons in that purchase. But if I swing round, and you'll have to excuse the messy workshop because that's what I work, how I work like. You see up here, there is a model in 16 mil of an incline, albeit not finished, but it's gonna be incorporated in the layout. Now it runs from here all the way around, as you can see, all the way around here, around and back to this area here. Now this particular area has got, if I can get my finger in the right place, you can see where I'm going to go to, it's got a drop section here. The idea of that is so that I can get the host transporter wagons and railroad in on this module. Now this module that you see here, this baseboard, is actually a module I'm building for the 16 mil Association's modular layout. And hopefully it will be ready to take to the Garden Railway Show in April at Peterborough. And I'll hopefully incorporate it in the mod modular layout. It's not, so, not something I've done before, but uh, it's something I'm enjoying doing. It's quite a challenge. Now, let's go back to where we were at the beginning of this uh, little video. This particular wagon, as you can see, is on four foot, I believe it is, scale, four foot track. Uh, alongside it, you'll see the 32 millimeter scale track, SM32, hand built as this is. Now, I'm using these white metal chairs which come from Brambright and I have it on good authority that Brambright will produce these again. Uh, they are, I think the code is CCO1B. Uh, I have to check on that one. But as you can see, they are rather nice. And if I pick up a piece of track, you can see, get it in focus, you can see how they are cast. And you can see that peg at the bottom has got a like a screw on it. Now well, that screw is um, pushed into a hole in the sleeper, like that there. Now I've got a jig 
for 32 mil, which is this one here. And what I've done is I've drilled two holes, as you can see, either end of that jig. And that jig is where you can place the, the sleeper in and drill through. And that gives me the spacing for the, or the gauge for the railway. The same applies really with the 16mm SN32. And there we are, there's a sleeper drilled ready to receive the chairs. And that goes in a purpose-made jig. So it enables me to put the pegs, pegged uh, chairs in uh, and then slide the rail in. Now what I've done, what I've done first of all, as you can see, uh, saw earlier, I've slid them onto a spare piece of, of track. And at the end of that track, oh, let's get it into focus. There we go. I've filed the squareness off and made a bit of a slight point. So where there's any surplus uh, white metal in the chair, it just pushes it through. You feed it onto the track and make sure it all works. And you will find on these chairs, there's a high side and a low side. The high side represents a keyed, as you can just see in the web of the rail there, a key. So that the, the uh, rail is actually held a slight cant. The lower side obviously allows it to, the wheels to pass over so the flanges don't hit the chair. Now these, as I said, are pushed into these holes. And, and as you can see, these are coloured. Now here is a piece of plywood that isn't. Um, and I haven't cut those, but that is the sleeper, length of sleeper that you have. You can see it's quite a long piece and you get quite a few sleep, sleepers out of that. And then you notice here, I've got a thicker piece of plywood. And that is for, not that one, that one you see there. And I made a jig up for that as well. Well, I didn't make a jig up. My mate, my friend, Ken Monday did, who lent me this. But he's also given me some of these chairs to get me started, see how I got on with them. As you can see, they sit in there quite nicely and I'm able to slide the rail in, which I've, I've got here. This is 10 mil. 10 mil product and it is four foot long so it gives me plenty of scope to get long pieces of track should I require it and if I want, want to make a scale length of track I'll measure along the track and put a little V in in the top of the rail with a, with a V file and it just makes enough de enough depth for it to go tick, 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 as the wagons pass over well that's just me being very fussy so there we are this is the start of a new model railway which i have called gilfach wen that is the polar opposite to gilfach the which is where the slate museum in slamberis is or should i say the national slate museum for wales is established the old workshops if you haven't been there I suggest you maybe make an effort and go because it's really very, very interesting. It's the old workshops of the old Dinorwick Quarry. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this introduction to the new layout and um, I'll be doing updates as, as things progress. But as I said, uh, if you do want chairs like I put on here, then get in touch with Brand Bright and they will be happy to supply you with them. Thank you, and I look forward to seeing you again sometime soon.